Well, good morning. It is good to be with you to give praise and worship to the Lord on this beautiful Sunday morning. Can I get an amen? Amen. amen. Hey, it is good to welcome sometimes eight here as well as the fabulous four. Uh, I understand sometimes eight is called sometimes eight because, well, just count them. How about that? There's, right, seven of you today? Uh, yeah, I can count. All right, seven. There's seven. So sometimes there's eight and sometimes there's fewer, but oh, getting to hear them practice. I don't know if any of you uh, were here yet, getting to hear them warm up. Were any of you able to hear them warm up? Was it delightful? Yeah, it was worth coming early for. I was just happy happenstance. So, um, hey, a few announcements before we jump into worship this morning. I do want to let you know that we are almost done with our school drive. Uh, You know, St. Paul's Church is this wonderful, loving community uh, that cares for its neighbors. And one of the ways that we're doing that right now is caring for our school teachers, getting them the supplies that they need uh, for the coming academic year. School is right around the corner. I don't know if that fills your heart with joy or dread, you tell me, Uh, but it is coming, and so we're helping our teachers get ready. There is one, two, three, four items still left on that board. If you're a a regular here and you want to grab one of those, that would be tremendous. I want to say that the due date for bringing all those items back is, uh, somebody help me out here, Mm, August 27th. So, next Sunday. So if you can grab them, uh, that board had probably about 90 to 100 items on it. And so uh, fantastic. Bring them back, put them in the school bus. That school bus is already overloaded. It is just beautiful. Um, Also want to let you know, Rally Sunday is right around the corner for us. That'll be uh, September 10th. Uh, We're going to have all church Sunday school for that Sunday uh, as well, so it should be a festive time. We'll kick off Sunday school by all of us getting to be little children again and color and do stickers and never underestimate the teaching value of crowns when it comes to teaching faith. Can I get an amen? Amen. All right. Anything else that I need to lift up? Oh, hey, there are Spark Children's Bibles in the back. We read uh, from them for our story time. If you want to take one, take one for free. We give them away like hotcakes because they're a wonderful children's Bible, and it's one of the ways that we share God's Word here. I think that's all that I need to say, and so I'm going to invite sometimes eight on up here, uh, and they're going to kick us off with just a closer walk with Jesus. And we'll just, we'll just have some worship and give praise to God in song and word, and it'll be wonderful. Come on up, y'all. I'm buying time for you, and you're just sitting there. So it's, it's, I talk too much. Just ask anybody who comes here, huh? Can I get an amen? amen. Yeah, I know, y'all. I know. Oh, hi. <laughs> I'm Randy Snell uh, for... For those of you that uh, don't know me and uh, I'd like the guys maybe to just introduce themselves we'll start with Jim down there Uh, Jim Brummeland been a while but we used to go to church here I'm Fred Gesloff and like Jim it's been a while we used to go to church here too Mike Loveland from Alturian our Savior's Moravian Garland Halbert Princeton Minnesota Zion Lutheran Church Luke Helen, been a long time. Hello, everybody. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, go to ask one free Lutheran over by Kenyon. Were you going to say anything more? No, you go. No, okay. <laughs> Al Carlson, and we now live down by Minnesota City, and used to go to church here as well. Okay. Are you ready, Mike? <laughs> was lost in sin, but Jesus took me in, and then a little light from heaven filled my soul. It paid my heart in love, and broke my name above, and just a little talk with Jesus makes me Will 
cup with Jesus makes it right. I may have doubts and fears, my eyes be filled with tears, but Jesus is a friend who watches day and night. I go to him in prayer, he knows my every care. And just a little talk with Jesus makes it right. Now let us have a little talk with Jesus. Let us tell him all about our troubles. He will hear our faintest cry and he will answer by and by. Now when you feel a little prayer will turning and you know a little fire is burning, you will find a little talk with Jesus makes it right. Like I said, it is wonderful to have y'all here with us. You know, sometimes eight had its roots here, its start here, and so it is an honor to have them as a part of our worship uh, service today. They're celebrating 30 years, a 30-year reunion. Is that right, Al? Uh, and so it's so cool for y'all to be able to gather together. I had lunch yesterday, and so with us today to give praise to God, uh, it is pretty cool. I didn't introduce myself. I realized that as um, they were introducing this. Themselves. I'm Pastor David Bucco, and I go to church at St. Paul's as well. Isn't that fun? I know, I know, I like it too. Hey, usually what we do right now is we get to have our children's story. We read a children's story, uh, even though we don't have Sunday school yet. Uh, this morning, the story is from the centurion servant. So if you're little and you want to come forward, you can, and we're going to read the centurion servant together.
You know, I mean, head on back to your seats. I, I love the range of children that we have in this space. <laughs> You know, it is good to, to meet fellow mischievous troublemakers in your life. It is, it is a good thing. Uh, and, and also, uh, to kind of uh, pivot on that, we know that sometimes uh, we make mistakes, that we mess up. We also know that God is good and God is forgiving, and we see that in Jesus Christ. And so we're going to take a moment and worship to go before God to confess our sins and our brokenness to receive God's forgiveness and pardon. Can I get an amen? And so, blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God who forgives all our sin, whose mercy endures forever. And so let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of our neighbors. We take a moment for confession and reflection. Now, most merciful God, we confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Hear this good news. And the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ, was given to die for us and for his sake. God forgives us all of our sins. As a called and ordained minister of the Church of Christ and by Christ's authority, I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of all of your sins in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Can I get an amen? Amen. amen. Church, could you join me in praying the prayer of the day? We're going to pray it together. Saying, God of all peoples, your arms reach out to embrace all those who call upon you. Teach us as disciples of your Son to love the world with compassion and constancy, that your name may be known throughout the earth, through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. I am going to ask that you rise uh, in reverence for the gospel. Our gospel this morning uh, gets to come from St. Matthew, the 15th chapter. Jesus left that place and went away to the district of Tyre and Sidon. And just then, a Canaanite woman from that region came out and started shouting, Have mercy on me, Lord, son of David. My daughter is tormented by a demon. But Jesus did not answer her at all. And his disciples came and urged him, saying, Send her away, for she keeps shouting after us. Jesus answered, I was sent only to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. But she came and knelt before him, saying, Lord, help me. He answered, it is not fair to take the children's food and throw it to the dogs. She said, yes, Lord. Yet even the dogs eat the crumbs that fall from their master's tables. And then Jesus answered her, Woman, great is your faith. Let it be done for you as you wish. And her daughter was healed instantly. This is the gospel of the Lord. Please have a seat. And the Lord be with you. I love this Canaanite woman in the text. This Canaanite woman in the text radically shifts the ministry of Jesus to not just include the traditional insiders of God, but to be a message of healing, hope, and salvation for all people. 
In short, if you count yourself redeemed today, you have this Canaanite woman to give thanks to. Let me show you what I mean, okay? So here's a reading from Matthew chapter 10. This is towards the beginning of Jesus' ministry. This is a quote. It goes, Then Jesus summoned his twelve disciples and gave them authority over unclean spirits to cast them out and to cure every disease and every sickness. Skipping ahead to verse 5. And these twelve Jesus sent out with the following instructions. He told them, Go nowhere among the Gentiles and enter no town of the Samaritans, but go rather to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. As you go, proclaim the good news. The kingdom of heaven has come near. Cure the sick, raise the dead, cleanse the lepers, cast out demons you received without payment. Give without payment. End quote. Did you catch that, though? Jesus says... Go nowhere among the Gentiles, the outsiders, the foreigners. Enter no town of the Samaritans. Instead, only go to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Right? Nowhere to the Gentiles. And so no one who is not traditionally Jewish, including the Samaritans, don't go to any of them. Only go to the lost children of Israel, the Jewish people. You with me? That's the beginning of Jesus' ministry in Matthew. But then I want to skip ahead to another passage, this one from the very end of the Gospel of Matthew. This is after the crucifixion. This is after the resurrection. This is from Matthew chapter 28, verse 16. Now the eleven disciples went to Galilee, to the mountain to which Jesus had directed them. And when they saw him, they worshipped him, but some doubted. And Jesus came and said to them, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go, therefore, and baptize all nations. All nations. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything that I have commanded you. And remember, I am with you always to the end of the age. End quote. Did you catch that? Go, therefore, and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, teaching them to obey everything that I have commanded you. There has been a shift in Jesus' ministry. Did you catch it? That at some point in Jesus' ministry, Jesus shifted from being entirely devoted to just one group of people, the lost sheep of Israel, the lost children of Israel, the Jewish people, God's chosen people, to being a ministry that encompasses healing, hope, and salvation for all. Full stop. Anyone want to guess when that shift happens? Or should I say, anyone want to guess who makes that shift happen in Jesus's ministry? Anybody want to guess? Look at the text. It's the Canaanite woman that we get to read about today. It is the Canaanite woman who shifts the entirety of Jesus's focus in Jesus's ministry. The Canaanite woman does that right? She changes who Jesus cares about. I love that, right? And here's the thing to note in the text, the text that we got to read this morning, it's not like Jesus sees this Canaanite woman and is like, oh yeah, I should include foreigners and outsiders. That would be a cool thing to do. I should include them alongside Jesus, God's traditional people. Okay, foreigners, outsiders, God's traditional people, everybody is welcome now. That's not how it happens, is it? No. Rather, this woman is persistent in her faith. Almost as if Jesus did not know who he was going to be dealing with that day. She follows Jesus in this text, shouting at him, not letting Jesus get, him, uh, get away. She calls him by his title. 
She pleads for what she needs. She will not let up. Her daughter is sick, dear people. She will not let uh, Jesus go. And so she follows him and pesters him and keeps shouting at him. Side note, anyone else have a toddler? (laughs) Anyone else have a toddler? Follow them around and go, mom, 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 mom. Some of you have 16-year-olds and they still do that. Am I right? (laughs) Right? That is the persistence of this woman and the text. And so Jesus calls the Canaanite woman to himself, and I wish in this text that it was to heal. Instead, he only tells her again, only reaffirms that his mission as Savior is only to the lost children of Israel, a.k.a. God's chosen people and the Jewish people. That there are people who are in, and then there are people who are out. And he says, you're an outsider. You are unworthy. Ouch. That's got to suck to be told that by Jesus, doesn't it? But here's the thing. Jesus does not know who he's dealing with this day. And never underestimate a mother pleading for the life of her child. Never underestimate a mother pleading for the life of her child. And so she takes his analogy and reminds him that even dogs get crumbs from the table. Basically, you're going to give me my crumbs, Lord. Yeah, yeah, I might be an outsider. I might be unworthy. You might even say that I am a dog, but if I am a dog, give me my crumbs of salvation, she tells him. I am a child of God, too, she tells him. And here's what Jesus does in this text. He heals her daughter. He applauds her faith. And read out of context, this story is just one about healing and a persistent mother. But we know the bigger story, don't we, dear church? We know that this Canaanite woman's faith shifts Jesus' entire ministry. This encounter makes Jesus reevaluate who his ministry is for, that this conversation changes Jesus' mind so that it is no longer just, and I quote, go nowhere among the Gentiles, enter no town of the Samaritans. Instead, it turns into, go therefore and make disciples of all nations. That's this woman in a nutshell. And so I want you to take two takeaways from this text this morning. If you zoned out, come back for a second, listen to the final bit. Number one, never underestimate being persistent with God. Never underestimate being persistent with God. If you have something that you need from God, feel free to follow God around going, mom, 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 until God listens. You with me on that, church? May you have my prayer, my blessing for you is may you have the persistence of a toddler and of this Canaanite woman. Can I get an amen? And the second takeaway is that God changes God's mind of who is in and who is out. And sometimes we as a church can cast a narrow view of who can receive the healing, hope, and salvation that is Jesus. And yet God's love is not for a singular people, is it? but something that God has done for all folks. Can I get a final amen? Amen. 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 Sometimes eight. Come on up. We get to hear you all sing again. Oh, sorry. Sometimes eight. You sit back down. Fabulous four. Please, please, please come share about the amazing grace that is God.
before y'all go too far away, I, I, I noticed that sometimes eight got to introduce themselves. Would you like to introduce yourselves? I see some head nose. Yes, some head nose. We're good. Well, just know that these are the fabulous four. And yes, there are four of them. And yes, they are fabulous. Five of them. Can I get an amen? Amen. <laughs> You know, it is about God's grace. We don't earn this love, dear people. It is given to us in Jesus Christ. And, 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 and I think sometimes we underestimate that. We try to make it about ourselves and what we can or cannot do. And yet at the end of the day, it is God's grace that redeems us. Can I get an amen? So beautiful song, Fabulous Four. Thank you so much. Please rise as you are able and let us proclaim our faith found in the words of the Apostles' Creed, saying, I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. And we get to enter into a time of prayer together. Uh, the way that we get to pray here is out loud. If you've got something that, that you're a hope, a worry, a concern, a, a thanks be to God, you get to lift it on up. Um, and so I'll start us off, and then as you feel led, feel free to jump on in, congregation. Good and gracious God, we give you thanks for our Savior Jesus and for the faith of this Canaanite woman to remind us that your love and your healing and your hope and your salvation is for all people. Speak that word into each one of us' hearts this morning. Lord, in your mercy. Others. You know, my brother Ben right now is in heart failure, uh, which isn't good. And so, uh, peace for my parents and for my family and healing for him, uh, even if that looks like a new heart. Lord, in your mercy. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Others. You know, we, we know that God hears our prayers. Uh, those that are spoken out loud and those that are also whispered on our hearts. And so we offer all of these to you, Lord, in the name of Jesus Christ, our Savior. And all of God's people say, Amen. Amen. 
Uh, we get to go into our offering. Um, it is a time of giving back. Uh, the thing that I love reminding the people here is that an offering isn't just a financial contribution. It is the way that we live our lives, that we get to be a living offering to the Lord. Can I get an amen? Amen. This time it is the sometimes eight. Y'all come on up. We get to hear the, 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 the hymn till the storm uh, passes by. I, I think a beautiful song to have sung, uh, particularly after the prayers and all these worries that we have on our hearts that God carries us through. Can I get an amen? Amen. I just wanted to say a couple more things about our reunion and, and being here today. Um, Al Carlson has been our fearless leader for, we, we performed together for about 20 years. We, n none of us can believe it was that long, but it was a long time. And for the last five years, he's been trying to get us back together again. We hadn't been together for, was it 14 or 15 years? And we hadn't actually seen Lucas since he got married 24 years ago or 25 years ago. Uh, he was a classmate of my son Ben in high school and started singing with us then. And then when he moved away, when you're about 20 or about 22. 22, so uh, it's great to you know get Lucas back here. Um, and yesterday, uh, Al and Mike and um, Cheryl Loveland put together this nice program for us, and we met at the um, Moravian Church in Altura and just had a nice social time together. And then uh, we, since we hadn't sung together for around 15 years, Al said scheduled about 25 minutes to practice. <laughs> mom, mom. <laughs> <laughs> and so I, I just wanted to, and I, I was remiss in saying that I was a member, my wife and I and family were members here um, for many years, and it's good to be back.
So let us pray. God of field and forest, sea and sky, you are the giver of all good things. Sustain us with these gifts of your creation and multiply your graciousness in us, that the world may be fed with your love. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, and all of God's people say, Amen. Amen. could pick on somebody who can help me slide at the altar a little bit more center. Uh, we scooched it to the side so we'd have plenty of room. Uh, and then I, uh, Jim, would you be able to help me here? This table slides quite easily. But it'll be good to have a second set of hands. We're just going to scooch it. Oh, I wouldn't pick it up even. Thank you much, sir. And so, dear church, the Lord be with you all. Absolutely. Lift up your hearts. Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Holy God, mighty Lord, gracious Father, endless is your mercy and eternal is your reign. You have filled all creation with light and life. Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Through Abraham, you promised to bless all nations. You rescued Israel, your chosen people. Through the prophets, you renewed your promise. And at this end of all the ages, you sent your Son, who in word and deed proclaimed your kingdom, and was obedient to your will, even to giving of his life. And so we remember that in the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, and he gave thanks, and he broke it, saying, This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And again, after supper, he took the cup, and gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in remembrance of me. And so gather together in this space by the Holy Spirit, let us pray that prayer our Lord Jesus taught us, saying, Our Father in heaven, Hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial, and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Come, taste, and see the Lord is good. Uh, this morning we get to have two lines, yes, two lines. Uh, and so we're going to come up the center. Uh, you get to receive the elements, right, the body of Christ given to you, uh, the cup of Christ, the blood of Christ shed for you. And then you'll return to your seats by the side aisle. If you get lost, just follow the person in front of you. Can I get an amen? Amen. 
Amen. Uh -huh, Amen. Also, another note to say, this is not my table or your table or even St. Paul's table. This is the Lord's table. And as we got to hear, all are welcome. Can I get an amen? Amen. amen. Come.
Christ given to you. This is the body of Christ given for you. This is the body of Christ given for you. This is the blood of Christ shed for you and for you. For all. Please rise and allow me to give you a blessing. The body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. We say amen. 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 Please be seated. I, I get to invite uh, sometimes eight for our communion hymn. I sing the almighty power of God. Y'all come on. sing the mighty power of God that makes the mountains rise, that spread the flowing seas abroad and filled the lofty skies. I sing the wisdom that ordained the sun to rule the day. The moon shines full Absolutely beautiful to give praise to God. It is wonderful getting to have y'all here and sing with us and, and to lead us in giving praise to God. Uh, it, is, it is a gift to have sometimes eight and the fabulous four here this morning. Can I get a round of applause for them? 
<laughs> Let us pray. We thank you, generous God, for the refreshment we have received at your banquet table. And so send us now to spread your generosity into all of the world through the one who is our dearest treasure, Jesus Christ, our Savior and our Lord. Can I get an amen? amen? And allow me to give you a blessing, dear people. The God who calls across the cosmos and speaks in the smallest seeds, bless, keep, and sustain you now and to the end of the age. Can I get an amen? Amen. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and invite our uh, combined choir up here. Uh, you know, it, it, it's only 9.54. I don't know if they, uh, lunch is supposed to be at 10.30. Do y'all know there's a lunch? There's a lunch at 10.30. However, I, I don't have another 30 minutes of sermon to give you. Uh, I know, I know you're thinking, man, I wish this guy would preach longer. Uh, but I'm not. Uh, and so are, are we good to have lunch at 10? I'm kind of waiting for a thumbs up or a wave or a yes. I'm getting a yes. We are good to have. So come and have. I don't. It's, it's not a brunch because there are no eggs or mimosas. We're sorry about that. Uh, but it is good food. It's, it, I have been hungry since the moment I walked the door. It smells delicious. It's one of the ways to kind of catch up and have conversation with one another, uh, with sometimes eight and the fabulous four. Uh, and just, uh, uh, you know, roll out the red carpet. It's good to feed people. I, I think that's one of the things churches have always been good at, is feeding people. So come and eat. If you're cooking for yourself for lunch today, you messed up, all right? Uh, can I get an amen? All right, sweet. Oh, well, y'all come on up. We're going to go uh, out singing uh, Let There Be Peace on Earth. I do want to let you know uh, that we're going to have, uh, uh, we're going to sing our threefold amen. Uh, y'all who come here regularly or have come here regularly know what I'm talking about. That'll be after the final words of dismissal. I uh, just want to give you a heads up there. And so let me get out y'all's way and make room for the whole choir. This, this is it. Join us. Mm -mm, y'all don't want that. Ladies, you have to introduce yourselves now. I'm Jana Ruhoff. I'm Luann Zellman and used to be a member here and now live in St. Cloud and am a member of Bethlehem Lutheran. Hi, I'm Julie Schneider. And I'm Diane Raddatz. And I'm Cheryl Rutland. <laughs> So with that beautiful song, let me send you in peace. Go in peace. Live the love of Christ. 
Amen. 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 Sometimes eight and fabulous four and sometimes more. Do y'all want to head to the back so y'all can greet folks as they come on out? I know, I know that people are going to want to tell you how much they loved it and enjoyed it. Uh, I most certainly did. Uh, can I get one more round of applause? The, the, the thing that I almost forgot, and I told Austin that I was going to have him pray the lunch prayer, uh, but he got nervous and said he wasn't going to do it, so I'll pray it. Uh, let's pray for lunch, and that way you can just head on out and eat.